Good morning, everybody. Today's the day we head back on the road. The truck is safetyed. It's all ready to go. Sitting in my shop. All we've got to do is get our stuff back into it, pack it up, and head out. Go get our load. Looks like Myrtle here survived the night, so that's good. Let's see how she's doing when I get back home. This was another unscheduled vacation. It wasn't a vacation at all. My truck was getting safety. That was the whole reason I'm at home. But I turned it into a vacation and we ended it off with the truck show there on Saturday. Today is Monday when I'm filming this. So uh, I sort of turned it into a vacation. That's sort of how I take my time off. I never, very rarely ever schedule like a week off for vacation because I feel like that's risky. You know, if, uh, if I take a week off when the truck is running well and when I'm able to be working, then I have these surprise vacations that show up. And I end up taking another week off because my truck is in the shop. So I sort of just end up taking time off when the truck takes time off. That way I know I'm not, you know, sort of feeling like I'm wasting valuable time that I could be making money. I couldn't be making money this week anyway. My truck was down, so... Why not turn it into a vacation? A vacation at home, we didn't go anywhere, but we got a lot done around here. So I got home, when was it? It was actually the Wednesday night, right? That's right, and my truck had to be at the shop by Friday, so we couldn't risk sending me out again on Thursday. I said I was sure to get back in time for the shop because my safety needed to get done. So, Thursday, Friday, plus another week, so nine days you know that'll hurt the pocketbook next month because I get paid for this month next month right so I gotta keep in mind next month is gonna be a little more tight as long as I remember that we don't have any big purchases that we're planning on making just take her easy and uh, work hard catch up anyways I'm gonna get the family all ready to go here I'm just letting the dogs out and go get our kid up get him ready for the day and when he goes down for his nap that's when I'm gonna leave and go get the truck ready. So I'll talk to you around then when I'm on my way to the truck. We got our running, we got everything in here. I'm about to pull this out of my shop, bobtail to our yard where I can pick up my load. I have to tie it down yet. I believe it's a load of steel for building. I got building steel. We're gonna take it to Regina for tomorrow. So let's go get it. Almost organized. Not quite. I gotta get moving. My appointment got moved up from 1 p.m. tomorrow till 12 p.m. Not a big deal. So, one hour. I have a feeling though that if I get there first thing in the morning, I might get lucky and get unloaded first thing in the morning. So, let's assume we're getting unloaded at like 8 a.m. and make sure that we're there in time tonight to get our rest break so we can get unloaded in the morning. Man, how long has it been since we've been in here driving truck? Has it been like nine days? I haven't made it. I barely made any videos at home. I, I, I took time off of everything. It was wonderful. Planted a tree, mowed the lawn twice, spent time with the family, went to a truck show, a truck front fundraiser. It was a lot of fun. I had a good time, but uh, we're back here, back to making daily videos. So don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends about the channel. We're going to be doing some hardcore trucking now to make up for it. People are commenting already, Josh, how can you afford to have so much time off? <laughs> I can't, <laughs> but the truck needs to be serviced, safety, and it needed to be polished for the year. So uh, uh, we're all we're all set now for the summer. Let's see if I remember how to drive this thing. Everything's good. Got my tarps on the back. Got everything in here. Got a little uh, Coca-Cola here just for just for kicks and giggles. Okay, got my keys here. Everything's locked. My doors are locked. Okay. If I remember how to do this. All right, here we go. Oh, that feels nice. I got new brakes on the truck, new drums on the on the back. One second, I got a can of bull snot on my dash over there. That can't stay there. Put you down there where you belong. A couple of hats over here on the dash as well. I'll just put you there for now. Kleenex box. So much stuff in such a little space. Okay, let's go. 
Oh, my clutch was adjusted too. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Oh, it's like a whole brand new truck. Yeah, I got new drum brakes, new brake pads on one of them in the back. Uh, what else did they do? I'm gonna have to take a close look at the invoice yet. They gotta send me a detailed invoice. Right now they got the truck out to me so I can get back to work. Oh, it's gonna be a long list, I'm sure. They fixed my visor again for me that had broken off the window again where I have it glued onto the windshield. They fixed that for me. I didn't even tell them about that. They just found it on their own and fixed it. So thank you, PBX. Let's not forget guys, on July 26th, 2024, this year, next month, there is a truck show fundraiser event, another one, in Blumenort, Manitoba, at PBX Truck Service. I'm gonna be there. I want you to be there too. You can come and take a look at the trucks. There's a concert featuring uh, headlining Doc Walker. Uh, you gotta go to the PBX website to get tickets. Those tickets go towards the fundraiser. So support local charities. You can go on their site, see which ones they're all supporting. Get tickets for the concert. Come out and hang out. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna be talking about it almost every day until that day. The Southeast Truck Show this year had uh, a little smaller of a truck turnout. They did really good for the fundraiser part of it, so that's good, that's the whole point of it, right? But uh, for the trucks that came to show up, uh, there wasn't as many this year, and I think that's because there was a bunch of other events that were going on on the same day. I believe Niverville had their, their town fair that day, the Mennonite Heritage Village in town here, again, sabotaged it by planning their own tractor show on the same day as the truck show, literally half a mile down the street. I was kind of upset about that. A little bit of communication and planning, and we could have planned those two events for two separate days. And then we could have attended both, and both fundraisers could have probably brought in more fundraising. But no, they went and planned it on the same day as the annual Southeast Truck Show. I don't know why. Ah, it is what it is, right? So uh, there wasn't as many trucks as we were hoping for. But next year, let's try to let's try to beat the all-time record. Let's get as many trucks out as possible. I haven't been on the road for what, 15 minutes. We already got bugs on the windshield. It's a great time of year, but. That's the downside. And this thing's running nice and smooth again. The brakes are nice and sharp. The clutch is nice and tight. Oh, it just rides like a dream again. You don't really notice it, right? Because everything was still fine, but man. Just getting that annual safety and having everything just sort of tweaked and adjusted. It's just nice all right we're here and I believe my load is one of those flatbeds right there trailer 541 there it is it's the lower one nice easier to tie down <laughs> it's the second one right there hello oh that's beautiful that's nice and easy throw a few straps over that and give her that's nice. That's nice. half done throwing the straps over I still got to throw more over this way yet and then tighten them down and that'll be good we'll be set and ready so one two three four four more straps from the other side this way and then I have straps going this way and that way sort of hugging the load onto the trailer because if you put all of the winches on one side it sort of wants to pull the load over towards that side right Sometimes you don't have a choice because some of these trailers were made by people who don't drive trucks and they put all of the winches on one side of the trailer and every load you pull you got to be very careful because those straps always want to pull the load over towards the winch side right when you alternate them like this pulling one winch that way one winch this way all the way down the trailer it hugs the load does that make sense so 
that's what we're doing and then we'll uh, quickly wipe down our aluminum so we're extra shiny to hit the road we just won't look at those rims look at those rims <laughs> Uh, we're almost done here. We won't be too much longer. Oh, oh man, I haven't tied down a load in a week. And, whew, I'm all out of breath. This isn't even that hard of a load to tie down. Man, that's what happens. So we're all ready to go. Tarps are on the back here, just in case I need it for my reload. Oh, I hope I won't. You never know. There you go, all buttoned down, tied down. That ain't going anywhere. Look at that shiny aluminum on that truck. Whew. Nice. Now I gotta keep that shiny through the summer. If you're wondering where I got my polish done, same place I get everything else done. It got done at PBX Truck Service in Blumenort. Same place that the truck show is gonna be July 26th. Right? You're gonna be there? Remember, you gotta go online, buy your tickets to get into the concert. That's the whole fundraiser thing. Raising money for the charities. Gotta get your tickets. I think they're like 35 bucks. I know. It's gonna be a really good concert though, and it's for a good cause. Gotta go uh, to the website down below in my description uh, pbxtruck.ca. Find it right down below my video there. One of the very first links, you'll see it there. Go to their website and you know, click around, you'll see their advertisements for it this July. Gotta get your tickets. And if you have a truck you wanna enter, you can enter your truck in there as well, or you can just call them. Call them on their phone number on their website. Uh, you can ask any questions to them there, obviously, about tickets for the concerts and also entering your truck if you want your truck in. I believe there's different classes. There's going to be a working class, which is what mine's going to be in, because it's a working truck. It's not a show truck. Uh, there's also going to be a show and shine class, which is show trucks. So I think there's going to be a pretty good number there from what I've heard, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be fun, though. I hope you guys can make it. Says me. Open sesame. Come on. Come on. There you go. Let me out. We're gonna fuel at Petro Pass in Brandon, Manitoba, about two and a half hours from where we are now. It's our best price on our way to Regina. Getting going a little later than we expected again, but good thing we're still on schedule. It is what it is. Oh, are you not paying attention to the signs there, bud? You just go ran into the cones. That's why they have that sign back there that said your lane was ending. I mean. <laughs> I don't know what else I can do. Just going around the south side of Winnipeg. I'm gonna stop in at uh, probably Flying J in Headingley. Not for fuel. Fuel's too expensive there for me. But uh, just something to eat. Maybe a coffee. I don't want to make too many stops today on the way to Regina a little bit further behind than I wanted to be like I was saying in the last clip there so we're gonna be cutting our uh, unnecessary stops out of our day stop to eat once stop for fuel and Brandon other than that just giving her and all we need is for this construction to uh, let us move a little smoother I have a feeling they're gonna want me to unload early. I mean, they've already got bumped up my appointment by an hour. And last time they did that, it got bumped up by like three hours the next day. Earlier the better, I guess. As long as I can get there on time, but I am still planning on being there for my agreed upon delivery time. It was 1 p.m., but then they changed it to noon and I agreed to that. I will plan to be there for noon. If I can be there earlier and they want me there earlier and it works out, good. But we'll see what happens. How many of these cars are going to want to cut in front of me here yet to turn right down Pemina? Are you going to cut in front of me? Most people do. No, not even. I've got to get out of this lane. We got a truck merging in up there. Come on in, bud. 
too heavy of a load I got behind me. It's only just under 37,000 pounds on my trailer. I can usually haul up to about, in Canada, about well, between 50, 55,000, depending on how it's loaded. In the US, about 45,000. Again, depending on how it's loaded. Maybe a bit more, maybe not. Depending on how much fuel I have to. situation here. What's the situation? Man, fuel here is a dollar thirty-three at Petro Pass and Brand and it's a dollar twenty-six. That's per liter. Times that by three point seven eight five to get the price in uh, in gallons. That's Canadian dollars too, so you gotta remember that. I'm speaking Canadian dollars here. But so it is. I don't want it. I changed my mind. Nope, don't want it. Not good enough for me. I just want to quickly sneak in there. Just slip right in. Just want a nice easy parking spot. I just want to go in. Quickly grab a bite to eat. Nice. Take it. Whitewood, Saskatchewan. 
I can't really show you outside right now because I'm not stepping foot out of my truck. It is mud. This whole yard, you can't even see it. It's all dark. No lights here. But uh, trust me, it is just straight mud. So it's a dirt lot usually, right? And it's been oh, raining all day here, obviously, because like it's packed. So I'm not worried about sinking in or anything, but I'm not gonna get out of my truck any more than I have to because I track mud in every time. Then I gotta clean my shoes off. And uh, you'll just have to trust me. I'll show you tomorrow where we're at. So don't forget to subscribe down below and tune in tomorrow, 4 p.m. Central Time uh, for tomorrow's video. Uh, we'll be continuing from here in Whitewood to Regina to deliver there. I'm planning on being there a few hours early because I'm, I'm I'm expecting them to unload me early. I got this weird feeling my tingly senses are going, hmm. They already called me once to move my appointment up from 1 till noon, right? Like I was telling you. And last time, like I told you before, they unloaded me like first thing in the morning. They called me up and said, hey, can you be here in like 10 minutes? Yeah, sure. Let's get unloaded now. So same same place right or, or same deal that wasn't Saskatoon I believe but this is the same kind of load so I want to be ready just in case so I'm gonna show up in Regina tomorrow at about 10 o'clock 10 a.m. not first thing because I've got to stop here for at least my eight hours now according to the law the government says I need to stop I must by law I have to go to sleep well at least I have to go back there Technically, because if I'm a sleeper birth, I'm supposed to be supposed to be back there, right? But do they really know if I'm back there or sitting here? <laughs> uh, I am tired. It won't take me long to fall asleep. Uh, and then after that, I have no reload lined up yet. But I'm not too worried about that because once I get unloaded, I'm sure I'll have a direction to head within an hour or two after that. So. We'll worry about that tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Today has enough worries and we are through the day. We made it. We're thankful. Thankful for a good warm bed to sleep in. Thankful for a good truck to drive. And for work. Remember to be thankful every day. Not just on Thanksgiving. Tell me one thing down below that you're thankful for today. On this very day. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Take care. Drive safe out there. Keep your eyes on the road.